me, but I am among you as he that but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint you unto a kingdom as my Father has appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both to prison and unto death. Peter says he's ready to go to prison and to death. But didn't Jesus just say, you're not even converted yet? But Peter does it here. Why does Peter not hear? Peter doesn't hear. What, what does the Bible say in Revelation? It, let the ear, let the spirit hear, right? Why doesn't Peter hear? Because he's full of himself, right? He's full of himself. He thinks he can walk in his own power. And what happens? This little girl takes him to the woodshed, doesn't she? She straightens him right out. She breaks his heart. Doesn't she? Because he figures out that he's not trusting in Jesus. He believes in Jesus. There's a lot of people who believe in Jesus. The devil and all the demons, they believe in Jesus. Right? You see the difference? You hear what I'm talking about here? And, and the disciples are worried about who's going to be counted the greatest. Are they focused on Jesus if they're worried about who's going to be counted the greatest? Or are they focused on themselves? Hmm. So how do we be good disciples? We completely and wholly and solely depend upon Jesus Christ and not ourselves. Amen. That we don't look and judge our brothers. Because all we're doing is lifting ourselves up. That's all we're doing. Pride. You've heard me say it before. I do believe that you can't find a sin that there isn't pride involved in it in some way. Pride is involved in all sin. That's my opinion. <laughs> but until somebody shows me that I'm wrong, I'm standing there. Let's turn to Luke 14. This thing works as a good thing for Luke 14, 25. 14, 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and turned and said unto him, if, thou, if any man come unto me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether ye have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. You ever seen that building over there on I-4? The keystone glass builder. They never finished it for years and years and years and years. It's still sitting there. You look and you go buy it. It's got the glass on it. I've also broke the glass and went in there. But there it is. <laughs> Anyways, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consult us whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him? that cometh against him with twenty thousand, or else while the other is a great way off, he sendeth an embassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Hmm. Salt is good, but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewether shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for dunghill. But man cast it out, he that hath ears, 
to hear. Let him hear. What is this talking about? Is Jesus going to take second place? Is he going to be first place or no place? Right? What's the Bible say? Seek ye first. Seek ye first. So if we're going to be disciples and we're going to be profitable servants unto the Lord, we need to do a few things, right? We need to what? Seek ye first, right? We need to stop judging our brothers and sisters. We need to be open to the Spirit, right? That He can lead us and teach us. Because we don't know everything, do we? No, John 15 says what? He is the vine. We are the branches. Without Him, we can do nothing. Period. That doesn't say something. It says nothing. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, we're running out of time here. So I'm just going to skip over some stuff. But you know the Lord's Prayer. What does the Lord's Prayer say? Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those debts. Alright. I can tell some of their Catholics, they keep going, right? <laughs> I, I grew up in a Catholic church. Anyways, it says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What, what does that presuppose if we're praying for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven? That God's will isn't always being done. Right? Or He wouldn't ask us to pray for His will to be done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah? Okay. I'm just going to take a moment to talk about the prodigal son for a minute. The prodigal son left his father, right? Says to his father, I want my inheritance. I want it now. Okay? What is he saying to his father? I wish you were dead. I want my money now. When do you get your inheritance? <coughs> After they die. So he's telling his father, spit night. I wish you were dead. I want my money now. So what does the father do? You ever stop and think this out? What do you suppose the father had to do? You guys have lots of cash in the bank? No. Alright? But you own property and stuff, right? You own some things, right? So, and if a state had to be broken in half, how would you do that? You have to sell some things, right? So the father maybe had to sell some things. Maybe he had to put a mortgage out on the farm, right? So that he could get the money together to give to his son so that he could go and live his riotous life, <coughs> right? And where does he find himself when he's wasted it all away? In a pig. Right? And what does he say? He works up all this thing he's going to tell his father. Because even the servants live better than he's living. He's eating pig food, right? Come on. His father doesn't even have pigs. Right? So what's he do? He works this thing all up and he's going back to the father. Right? Does the father even let him Finish this whole speech? No. What does it say about the father? The father's what? He's standing there looking afar off. In the Jewish economy, let me tell you, men over 30 do not run. Okay, this is an amazing story. This is an amazing story. The Bible says that this man ran to his son. Okay? And what did he do? As the son tried to get the no, 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 just, just, enough already. Put a robe, put a ring, kill the fatted calf, we're going to have a party. 
What do you think? What do you think about this son? Was he an unprofitable servant? He signifies the human race. Signifies the human race. I agree with that. It's a good statement. Very good. But he's waking up as yeah. a he doesn't come back as a servant, does he? He comes back as a son. Amen. <laughs> what does Jesus call you? Brothers, Brothers and sisters. Amen. And we don't even have time to get into the older brother. <laughs> the older brother. Boy, that poor rascal. He represents uh, the Jewish nation. You know, it's, it's, it's terribly sad. The father says, what? All that I have is yours. Can you imagine the broken heart that he's trying to speak to his, to his oldest son? And, and his son just can't hear him. You ever talk to people that just can't hear him? You just get tired of talking? Because they just don't hear you? Don't get tired of me. <laughs> I'm listening. I don't always hear so. I'm a better talker than I am a listener. And I'm learning. I want to be a profitable servant. I want to see the Lord come. And I think we're going to see Him in our generation. I really do. Because as far as I'm concerned, this thing is wrapping up fast. Brothers and sisters, our closing hymn will be 493, and I want to let you know that all are invited. We've got we sure plenty of food back there for fellowship lunch and all way, way back.
pour out this cup. Because you can't give you more if you're already filled up. So we need to dump out all this garbage that we got in there and hold that cup up. And I want to ask you, if you want to be a profitable servant of the Lord, if you agree that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior of your soul, I just ask you to raise your hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us despite ourselves. I pray that we would see you and look to you for all of our sustenance. That we would not be judging our brothers and sisters. That we would have our ears open and attentive. To the, to the calling that you have given us, that we would shake and move mountains for your kingdom, that mighty miracles would happen even this day as we leave this place, that we would touch your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.